Wow, thank you so very much. Thank you. Let me see if I can begin by painting a picture of your life, painting a picture of the life I run into day in and day out on the road when I'm talking with people about how to address their lives, about how to take control of their lives. And let me see if this resonates with your experience. You're frequently sleep deprived and you're always tired. You're always on the run and you're frequently late. You skip breakfast most days or you catch a coffee and a muffin on the way to work. There's a steady stream of emails flooding into your inbox, ping, 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 all day long, and it creates a relentless, voracious demand that can never be met. Voicemails stalk you at your home phone, at your office phone, on your voicemail, on your Blackberry. You worry that you won't get it all done, and that what you do get done won't be good enough, and that somehow, somewhere, you are going to disappoint someone. You grab lunch on the run or you skip it all together and you're still gaining weight. You just don't have time to exercise, or at least that's how you explain it to yourself. By the time you get home at the end of the day, you're pretty much running on empty. You don't feel you spend enough time with your family and when you're there, you're not always really, truly there. Now, how many of you feel like I just described the life you're leading. Have you ever had this thought, something about my life isn't quite right? <laughs> this isn't what I thought I signed up for when I agreed to become an adult and get a job. You are all wired up, but you're slowly melting down and you're not quite sure what to do about it. Help my friends, is on the way. There is a solution. I want to show you a way to accomplish more in less time with a higher quality of output and a vastly higher quality of life. That is the Energy Project. Let's start with principle number one. We experience four different energy states, but only one of them is optimal for performance. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to write down now two or three adjectives that describe how you feel when you're performing at your best. Just yell it out for me and I'll try and repeat it. Exhilarated. Exhilarated. Excited. Excited. Yeah. Fulfilled. Yeah. Successful. Connected, focused, engaged. Okay, so we've got this series of adjectives, energized and confident and connected and optimistic and passionate, focused, joyous. These are the ways you feel when you're performing at your best. Those are the only feelings that you can have if you want to perform at your best. Let me flip the equation. If you are not feeling that way, you cannot perform at your best. Is there any doubt in anyone's mind here that you are better off and so are the people around you when you are in the high positive energy zone. So the question becomes how do you take control of your energy? How do you move from letting the external events of your life determine how you're feeling to taking control of where you are no matter what's going on around you and especially, especially under relentless demand and high stress. I'm here to ennoble, to ennoble rest and renewal, not just because it will make you healthier, and not just because it will make you happier, those would be enough, wouldn't it? But because it will drive better, more sustained performance in the service of whatever mission you are on. It's about building a rhythmic pattern of energy expenditure and energy recovery. We call this the performance pulse. What this requires, and there's nothing more important I'm going to say to you today than this, what this requires is a dramatic paradigm shift in your life. It's a paradigm shift 
from the mentality of the marathoner to the mentality of the sprinter. The marathoner, the way I was describing it in terms of my writing, instinctively is conserving energy all along the way because there is no finish line in sight. And if they didn't, if you got a marathoner of any quality, from great to terrible, and you had him sprint or her sprint the first half mile, that would be the end of the race for that marathoner. So what, they, what you learn to do as a marathoner is to find ways to cheat on engagement. You do not fully engage because you know if you did, you would burn out and break down. Now let's compare this to the mentality of the sprinter. When you look at a sprinter compared to virtually any human being on this earth, they look like Greek gods and goddesses. Why? Because they've understood something we haven't. The finish line, 100 yards away, 200 yards away. Can I throw myself into it? Can I fully engage in this activity for 100 yards? Bet your life I can, because in 100 yards, I'm going to chill, baby. That is how I'm suggesting you ought to be thinking about living your life. Your life has been robbed of its boundaries. The same technology that keeps you unbelievably connected to each other now makes it impossible to disconnect. The voicemails stalk you. The email stalks you. You cannot get away. You never recover. You never fully recover. If you want to recover, you have to become proactive in building back boundaries into your life. That's what it takes. It's rethinking the concept of the tortoise and the hare. You grew up hearing that particular cliched story that it was the tortoise that won the race. I'm here to tell you it ain't. The hare sprints and recovers. The dog sprints and recovers. The lion sprints and recovers. The gazelle sprints and recovers. The human being sprints and sprints and sprints and drops. Stupid human beings. Not who you want to be. Change is hard. Really hard. Why? Because we're creatures of habit. What we did yesterday is exactly what we're going to do today. If you have to think about something for long, you are not going to do it for long. Think about a New Year's resolution. Can I just for a second have the house lights again because I want to see this? I mean, all the lights. How many people made a New Year's resolution this year? How many people? Okay, so it looks like about 80 out of 5,000. So, 4,900 didn't make a New Year's resolution. Why not? They don't work. They don't work. Now, being brutally honest, no, I still want the house lights. Still hold them up. Being brutally honest, of those people who raised their hand and said you made a New Year's resolution on January 1st, how many have completely stuck with that resolution? <laughs> Clap for those 18 people. <laughs> Will and discipline are vastly overrated. Vastly overrated, Will and discipline. None of us has much of either one. Because we don't have much of either one, because we are automatic animals, because we can make heartfelt New Year's resolutions and wash, see them wash away with the wind in a matter of days or weeks, we have to use this precious resource of will and discipline incredibly selectively with the aim of no longer needing it. The sooner you can get past needing will and discipline, the more likely it is you will be able to get a behavior to sustain over time. So remember the three principles of managing energy that I've shared with you today. Number one, there are four kinds of energy, and only one is optimal for, perform for high performance. Number two, to refuel 
and sustain capacity, it's critical to build the skill of intermittent recovery and renewal. And finally, to make it all happen, you must build positive rituals one at a time. And you have just designed your first one, your first energy project. This is no small undertaking I'm leaving with you. I'm asking you to undertake a true hero's journey. And it's a journey that I hope will continue from this day, every day forward. I will be rooting for you. I honor you for taking on this great challenge. I wish you well, and I thank you very much for your time.